Oh, I see you talking. We are live, I believe, right? We are live. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Lunch and Learn. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. I'm excited about today's guest. Uh, this is our 33rd episode. Our 33rd episode, for those of oh you that know, goodness. we launched this way back in, in April uh, due to COVID-19. And uh, we we're trying to bring insight to the industry, bring various guests on. And I'm really excited about today's guest talking about a very important organization. And uh, without further ado, uh, Shante, Shante, I'm sorry, Shante, Shante, uh, Shante uh, is with NAREB. She's the 2020 uh, Educational Committee Chair. And uh, last year, I had the great pleasure of presenting at the 72nd Annual Conference, which was out in uh, New Jersey. It was an amazing conference, great content, just a great organization. So really excited uh, to have you on today. Thank you so much for the invite. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And um, so you're out west. You're in Vegas, correct? I am. So if you're sweating a little bit, I think you said it's what, 100? And... It's, yeah, it's, it's going to be 112 today. Okay. Okay. <laughs> outside, so that tells you I'm so used to the heat. I'm like, it's not a big deal. At least it's not 120. Yeah, that's a great outlook. That's a great outlook. <laughs> so um, we've had various guests on this show and um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about NAREB and your organization. Of course, we'll talk a little bit more about your role and, and the Vegas market and get your, you, you have your finger on various pulses as well, just based on your connections. But uh, first off, tell everybody a little bit about you and then we'll talk a little bit about NAREB. Okay. Uh, well, my name is Shante Patton. I am um, a native or what is as close as possible to being a native of Las Vegas. I've lived here almost my whole life. Um, I am a real estate agent, broker salesperson with ERA Brokers Consolidated. Um, I've been an agent for 16 years, so I've seen a good portion of the different markets that we have here um, in Las Vegas. I am a mom of three and a fiance of one, and um, I'm really excited to be here. There's, I hold a lot of hats with NAREP. The education um, chair is one of them. I'm also in charge of their whole NARED University, as well as the regional vice president for 17 chapters, everything west of Colorado. Man, that's a lot of hats you're wearing. It, it's a lot of hats. I, um, I also sit on the state and local Realtor Association and I've just taken over to create and run their diversity and inclusion uh, committee for the state. So I like to keep my hand everywhere I possibly can so I can stay up and current on the things that are most important. Yeah, that, that's that's great to hear uh, that you're actively involved. 16 years. So I've been in real estate since 2000. So going on our 20th year. So <laughs> very similar. Yeah, we've seen peaks and valleys together Absolutely. Uh, in our journey. Uh, talk to me a little bit about NAREB. Um, the organization, National Association of Real Estate Brokers, which I believe mm -hmm. is in the 73rd year, is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the 73rd year. So National Association of Real Estate Brokers, uh, you can go to NAREB, uh, is it NAREB.com? NAREB.com. Mm -hmm. N-A-R-E-B.com. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us a little bit about NAREB and talk to me a little bit about some of their goals and missions. Uh, that would be great. So. Um, obviously, NAREB has been around probably more important now than we ever have, obviously, um, with everything that's going on. But NAREB was founded in 1947 with a goal to have democracy and housing for everyone. Um, we focus on Black home ownership, and obviously we have an uphill battle, but we are moving forward and we're really strong right now. We have a great president, Mr. Donnell Williams. And he has come with one of the most aggressive plans NAREB has seen thus far. And so we're really excited about his, about this. His main focus is on millennials. So he has a huge program called House Then the Car. And it is a focus on the millennials out there who are mortgage ready. They make over $100,000 a year, but they're still renting. And the Quite a few times when we see them looking for mortgages, they have a large car payment. They love the luxuries of life. And so our goal and the president's goal is to make sure that we are encouraging them and educating them to purchase the home first and then to buy the car. The home can pay for the car. The home can pay in, in 
filled them through all sorts of things, their travel, their everything. And it's important that we have that generational wealth. So one of the main focuses that he has is the house and the car. He also has a second program of the eight, it's called the NAREB eight, and it's his eight initiatives that he wanted to accomplish during his two year tenure. And so far he's in his first year and he is full speed ahead. Um, and so NAREB normally is the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. Um, but during this presidency, we focus on NAREB, which is networking, advocacy, relationships, education, and business. And so he's taking a spin to what we already know um, and making it and bringing it current. And so some of the things that he focuses on in addition to House in the Car is his Rosie program. And Rosie is Realtors Opportunities for Seasoned Individuals. And so it focuses on making sure that our homeowners, especially our minority elderly homeowners, are not putting their, their investment at risk. So we wanna make sure that they have life insurance and health insurance and a will on a property so they're not going through probate, which is a really huge thing in our community. And so some of the things he focuses on is making sure that they own real estate, that they continue to invest in real estate. We talk about reverse mortgages and retirement, just making sure that they are prepared for these things. So he has another program called Civic Engagement. And so a lot of investment and a lot of the wealth we have is obviously comes from real estate, but a lot of um, homeowners and a lot of people in general in the black community are very strong in their church environment. And so we have the civic engagement, which allows us to one, have relationships with other um, organizations, whether it be the NAACP or the Deltas or any of these outside um, organizations. But in addition to that, he also has the ability to go in and build wealth within the church, build property on the, on the land they already own. But most importantly, in a black community, we focus and have a really great relationship with our religion. And so being able to take a step back and truly be able to get in and create allies with the church and the pastors and our reverends and really work together to get into the community and make sure that we are providing every single thing we can to make sure our people are as successful as possible. That falls into our advocacy. So we're always in the community. We do our wealth building days when we're out there in the community, whether we're in the church, wherever they need us, we will go out there. We will teach them how to advocate for themselves, whether that is how to read a closing statement, things they need to look for when they're hiring a real estate agent, you know, how to work on their credit without hiring outside agencies, which aren't always legit. We want to make sure they're, they're able to advocate for themselves so that we don't get in another situation where we lost so much of our wealth during a downturn. And so these are just a couple of the things that he is focused on with his NAREB 8. And it's, it's so innovative and put so much passion and so much time into making it successful. And we're already seeing the fruits of his labor as it is. So we know that there's a lot of work still to get done. But we're, we're, mo we're more motivated than we ever have been before because we have a plan and we're moving forward, we're mobilizing and we're educating along the way. So in addition to what we do in the community, you know, we have a whole aspect of what we do for our members. And some of those things, especially for this president is to empower, mobilize and educate. And so we're out there empowering our agents with the best education they possibly can get. And being the education chair, myself and my committee have spent so much time trying to figure out what do our members need now? What will they need in the future? How do we get them during this time, which is not something that we ever even thought possible? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, and what can we can do to be able to continue to educate them? So we come really strong with our education, whether that is marketing or branding, we just on the tail end of our CRM series and we spent um, about six weeks interviewing and getting live demos from the top CRM companies of 2020. Okay. You know, we're moving into our social media and our branding. So we have experts coming in to talk about the type of video equipment you need, uh -huh. do Instagram, um, especially using Instagram as a way to do buyer and seller webinars and really get out there into the community. But 
branding and social media is our next gun ho project. Okay. Before we hit the end of the year, we're going to go in and come up with a new hustle plan, you know, our full business plan, what the dollars need to look like, how you need to run your business, getting back to the basics, whether you are an LLC or should you be an S Corp and really getting down in there and making sure that everyone's on the same level with the bare minimum. So as we continue to excel, we can move forward and gain strength from there. And we all know that in order to advocate, your house has to be in order. So we have to make sure that we are impacting the bottom line for every single one of our members before we can even go out there and expect them to give their all to our community. So we have to make sure that we hit each facet as quickly as possible. So a lot of wealth of information you shared there. Um, so first off, Danelle is doing an amazing job in under a year. Those are some really great initiatives. Um, are those somewhere that um, I can post or somewhere that um, oh, absolutely. a member can, can get access to at this point? Yeah, so when you go on NARAB.com, you can go under what we do and then click on NARAB 8 and you'll see all the initiatives there. That's great. Uh, I'll try to maybe grab the link and post it to definitely on the replay. So that that's, uh, so Danelle's doing a great job. I was at, yes. uh, I guess, what do you call that? But when they're swearing him in, he was the transition. Installation. Last, installation. Mm -hmm. I was at the mm -hmm. installation gathering party last year. It was, it was a great was event. Um, so you shared a lot of a lot of information what he's doing, but you also talked about the various initiatives. Uh, NAREB, of course, is it sounds like multifaceted. One, you're you're educating real estate agents and brokers on how to run their business more successfully, but you're also providing them tools, resources, and knowledge so that they can bring more value to their local marketplace. So that should somebody look to buy, sell, or rent you know, hopefully they're looking to do business with someone that brings value and is a local expert versus somebody that just has their license. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're making sure that they have everything. Mm -hmm. And obviously the goal is for them to join us and be members, but we're educating the communities. We're educating agents, you know, as a whole, we have over 90 chapters across the country. So we have our hands everywhere we possibly can just educating as much as possible, being able to raise the bar, you know, and, and make sure that we're doing what we can do for our community and for our clients. And that starts with education. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's why we focus so heavily on that. Um, we are very proud to be called realtists, you know, and um, in 1947, as African American real estate agents, we were not allowed to be realtors on um, the National Association of Realtors was closed to African Americans. And so NAREB was born, was born there, you know, and instead of calling ourselves real tours, we are real tips. And that encompasses every single thing we do, including our advocacy in our community, as well as the education we bring to our members. Well, that, that like, I, I wanna repeat that because that was very informative, but so in 1947, and I, I learned all this, you know, through last year's training and, mm -hmm. and preparing for it. I was shocked by this. So in the late 1940s, African-Americans were not allowed to be members of the National Association of Realtors. So I'm, I'm giving a little background, um, Shantae, because we have some people that watch these streams that might not be licensed real estate. So, so African-Americans were not allowed to be uh, part of the largest organization of real estate agents called National Association of Realtors or NAR. So uh, that's when NAREB formed and Realtist uh, is what uh, members of NAREB called themselves because they were not allowed to be Realtors back 73 years ago, correct? Correct, correct. Okay. So it's been obviously that relationship has um, has healed a bit over time, you know, but that is where we started. We were not allowed to do that. But one of the things that NARAB did is we stuck to our core and we fought for fair housing for everyone. And that was during the times where NAR did not. They were on the other side of fair housing. They didn't want the integration. They were supporting redlining and block busting over that time. And NARAB was there to make sure it did not happen. You know, and so we were there. One of our first um, conferences, our keynote speaker was Martin Luther King. You know, and so we have been there through this whole time. 
And then we, our, our goals have always been the same, democracy and housing. You know, we've had our wins and we've had our losses, but we've never swayed from the purpose of making sure that there's democracy and housing and that there's fair credit for everyone, you know, and that we make sure if companies are not doing their part, that we bring light to that. You mm-hmm. know, our, our president has had the opportunity to testify, you know, in front of Congress and all these different areas um, to make sure that we are doing what we can to continue to make an even playing field for everyone. Mm-hmm. And you brought up um, a little bit earlier, but one of the key initiatives that I took away from last year's conference with the banners and everything, one of NAREB's uh, goals, of course, is increased Black ownership, correct? We have a goal of 2 million new Black homeowners in the next five years. And so we've been moving towards that and, and we're getting stronger and getting more momentum um, as more people learn about us and we create new partnerships. And so we're confident with our progress and where we're going with it. But, and we know it's a big goal, but we weren't, we weren't just here yesterday. Uh-huh. You know, we have a lot of momentum um, and we've got a lot of effort and a lot of members behind us mm-hmm. and people who are non-members who just support the goal and know the mission and why black home ownership matters and why it's so important. Uh-huh. That's, a, that's a great noble cause. So, um, mm-hmm. So a couple things. Um, talk to me a little bit about. Um, so you said you have around ninety chapters, correct? Correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, any chapters outside of the United States? Not currently, but we are working on one in Ghana, um, oh. through an initiative that the president has for his international committee, which is a part of the NAREP Eight. So we are working on expanding out of that currently. So we're okay. excited about the opportunity. Great. Mm-hmm. I have some pretty good contacts in Canada, so if I can help with that as well, that's... Oh, we will. Let's definitely talk about that. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good uh, relationship there. Um, and so talk to me about, um, don't uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't a, lar- a large percent of um, NAREB agents um, not with your traditional large franchises, i.e. the Coal Bankers, ERA, you're with ERA, the Sotheby's, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. And so, you know, a lot of times real estate agents take education for granted. Yeah, there's a lot of free Facebook groups out there, but we're talking tools, resources, you know, great uh, education that some brokerages, larger franchises provide, sometimes the smaller independents don't have the same access to that. So isn't that a, a void which NAREB helps fill? Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, it's not called the National Association of Real Estate Brokers for nothing. And we do encourage everyone to own their own brokerage and we help them get there. So we help them build, you know, have the resources to find out what's the best backdoor system, what's the, what's the best payroll system. We are here to build entrepreneurs and we would love for everyone who has the desire to own their own company to do that. And we do fill that void. We also can fill that, vo- that void if they are a small brokerage, you know, with even less than 10 agents and they, they might not have that resource to get people to teach them directly or companies to come. So we can fill that void because we have the ability to go get the best company, the best coaches to come and talk about coaching, the best CRMs, whatever that is to help them be better, we have the ability to fill that void for smaller brokerages. And that's one of the reasons why we are the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, you know, because we're able to do that as well. That's great. Uh, don't forget, if anybody has a, um, a question for Shantae or myself, please, if you're watching through Facebook, I'll check the various groups, but we have some watching, of course, through Zoom. Please uh, type in your question. If you guys are getting some value from this, leave us a like. We'd love to uh, continue to, to raise awareness on NAREB. Uh, so a lot of various initiatives. COVID-19 is hit. You guys are providing, sounds like some great free uh, webinars, Zoom trainings, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, what, what are you seeing out there as far as uh, those brokers that are uh, making the most of of what, you know, what was dished to us as far as with this pandemic and are, are bringing value to the community are maybe on pace to, to do just as good, if not better from last year. Are there, are there certain traits or characteristics that you're seeing that some of your best NARAB uh, brokers are having success at, and, and can you pinpoint maybe some reasons why? 
I think because they're doubling down, you know, and so I think you had an option. You could either really cower and get really scared or you could literally double down on every single thing that you put in a short amount of time that we had to be able to adjust and pivot to this. And so a lot of the brokers are doubling down. You know, our average webinars are averaging about four to 500 people per yeah. webinar. Wow. So literally jumped in and we currently, because of the demands, we're having about five webinars a week. And they're all kind of categorized. So we have our HTTC, which is our house in the car. But the president has also been focusing quite a bit on the advocacy part. Um, we had Ben Carson on in April to talk a little bit about what's going on with HUD. And so we brought in as much information. We've done quite a few series on the PPP and just making sure that we knew exactly where we needed to be what resources were available for us and so it seems like brokers are just doubling down and getting as much information as they possibly can so that they can stay afloat and continue to prosper you know and here in las vegas it's the market is it's booming it's so crazy um and i'm a part of a bunch of different lead groups and we're probably still getting in 10 or 12 a day huh. so it's kind of the opposite of what we even thought it would be I know for me, I thought it was going to be a lot slower during that time. Um, but now that we can get back in houses and, and some of our city has opened up, it's busier than it ever was. You know, and that's positive, especially for Las Vegas. Yeah, that's great. And we're, you know, I'm based in the Chicagoland market, but through my coaching consulting company, I have fingers on various pulses and I'm seeing the same thing. I'm seeing, you know, shortage of, of supply. And if something is priced well and in decent shape, you know, it's selling and and we're yeah. seeing multiple offers in our market where we haven't seen that in, in years and uh, of course we help uh, buyers and sellers and agents of all price points but the focus of this series is called luxury lunch and learn we're also seeing the luxury market healthier than it's been in, in 10 plus years in many markets absolutely and same here and it's just it's amazing to me um i'm, I'm grateful for it you know, because that means not as people are as, are as affected as they could be. And that's always positive. And we don't know what will happen in three months, you know, or four months. But ultimately, we're busy. We were in a multiple offer situation prior to this happening. Um, and we're, we still are. And so even during the slow time of like that May, June time, we've seen a pickup since then because people are we have some procedures in place to be as safe as possible when we're going in homes some more sellers are opening their homes up for us to show and it's been it's been really interesting to see how busy it is uh -huh, uh -huh. so uh, a couple things so first off uh, some great information on NAREB as licensed real estate agents i have this in going live to several groups, please check out nareb.com, nareb.com. And I know the answer to this, but I'm gonna address the elephant in the room. It's open to all, NAREB. You don't have to be African-American of color to be a NAREB That's member, correct? Great. We are inclusive to everyone. You do not need to be African-American to be a part of this organization. You don't need to be African-American to believe that black home ownership matters. You know, just this is, even if you just come for the education, there's so many reasons to be a part of this organization, whether you're passionate about the advocacy or our initiatives or the education, there is literally something for everyone here. So I would encourage every single person to be a member at NARAP. All right, that's awesome. And as much as I uh, believe in it, I'm not even a member, so I'm gonna sign up today. I'm gonna sign up today. And so uh, that's something I'm pledging and I'll make sure that we get everybody out there uh, to yes. do the same, okay? I'm gonna have the president call you. Please, please. Chicago, right? Yes. I'll have the president of Chicago give you a call today. Yeah, you know, I, I, I know him, he did a great job. So we actually partnered up with NAREB uh, in October. We hosted mm -hmm. a, a live designation class here where we toured a couple luxury homes and mm -hmm. it was great. And we gave some scholarships to the local NAREB chapter okay. and so, uh, that's something that I want to do as well. To, uh, just so you know, tomorrow we're starting a two-day intensive uh, luxury training program. I know I, I told you about it, but I want to give 25 free passes. You, you, now, that's going to be a lot of 
and work for you. So we'll make sure that Carlton, uh, DeAndre, Dorinda, Stacy, Val, everybody on this, you guys get the first five. And, and uh, if you guys can make it, we'll give you a replay of it. But uh, it's two trainings uh, built tomorrow from noon to three central time and noon to three central time on uh, Wednesday, live trainings. And our goal is to help agents. You mentioned it earlier through education. I believe if real estate agents grow their knowledge, their confidence will grow. And Shantae, if they're more confident, they're, they're more likely to maybe do some prospecting or some lead generation, or maybe go to maybe some of those zip codes that they've never sold a property before. But that's really my goal is to help agents grow their knowledge and their confidence and, and increase uh, their average sale price. But we, we encourage working with everybody, of course. Yeah, and I think it's so important. When I was president of Las Vegas, we created a luxury series um, and it was huge here. We did it every single year. And it really focused on what type of product is typical, you know, in a luxury property, because it's not the same as KB Homes. Sure, it's sure. What are the top agents doing for branding and for marketing? How do you get started into luxury? And it's so important. I think more people would be in a field if they were, if they have the knowledge first. And I think the knowledge, the lack of knowledge is what keeps them from doing it. And I think it's also going to be, we've talked about it a couple times, bringing that luxury designation to NAREP, which I'm determined to do. And it will be a huge benefit to bring another facet to what we do and to be able to tap into that luxury market too. So I'm looking forward to the partnership that we're going to have in order to, to spread this ability to do luxury to our members as well. Yeah, no, that's that's... That's excellent. All right, so I'm going to address some elephants in the room as a Caucasian. What, what, you know, the difficulty of talking race in real estate or just talking race, and and here we are in July. What, what, you know, what words of advice do you have to to non African Americans and perhaps just Caucasians um, in in general when it comes to not just real estate but uh, just making you know making more people knowledgeable of of what can be done to to raise the bar, right? To to help healing, to acknowledge, to you know all, all of the above. Uh, as a uh, as a concerned American, I, I want to make sure that everybody feels comfortable uh, with where they are at. Um, we've had uh, NAGO rep on uh, National Association of Gay Lesbian. Uh, we, you know, just making sure everybody, uh, whether you're Caucasian, whether you're Hispanic, whether you're skinny, whether you're tall, short. You know, I teach my kids to make sure that everybody feels welcome. So, what can we do? as an industry, you know, as, as a non NARAB member, as a new NARAB member, as a NARAB member, what can we do to, you know, to, 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 we got a long way to go, but to help raise the bar and to continue to encourage each other and, and build each other up? I think first you need to seek to understand, you know, and truly be able to understand, take yourself out of um, your comfort zone and take away your beliefs and maybe misconceptions that it's equal across the board, you know, and just think for a moment, what if it wasn't? What if it's not equal across the board? Then come to the table with an open mind. And, you know, I will give you, I will give you an example because we see that this being pushed around, you know, I've talked about it quite a bit on my social media this black black lives matter versus all lives matter mm -hmm. and why sometimes especially now um it feels as though when we say black lives matter and the response is all lives matter it almost feels like the new n-word because it's being thrown back at us in a way to discredit what we're saying and so here's a way that I guess I could try to explain it. So for the all lives matter people, because I do think uh, some of my friends say, and I think they truly do believe that all, lab, all lives matter. And so if I was to go to a rally and the rally was for, to bring awareness to the high number of suicides for veterans, okay. And if I went to that, we, I can agree that that is a high number. I'm not a veteran, right? 
but I know that that number is high and I know that something needs to be done about it. So again, I'm seeking first to understand I'm not in that position at all. I'm not a veteran, so I don't know what that feels like. But if I'm at a veteran, a rally specifically on suicide levels for veterans, I would not come to that rally and say, all lives matter, all, you know, not just veterans. You know, what about Asian lives? What about um, childhood homelessness, right? Which is also just, right? But if I'm at a veteran's suicide rally, then we're talking about the importance of veteran suicide rates. This is not discrediting from um, childhood homelessness, you know, or the fact that children don't have enough food and all those things are important too. But today we're talking about veterans. So if I was to come to that rally that's specifically on the importance of veteran home suicide rates, and I say to you, all lives matter, clearly they do, right? But today we're talking about veterans, you know, or we go to a rally and we're specifically talking about the high level of police officers who have been killed in a line of duty. And I come to that rally and say, do you see all the people who have died in mass shootings? Yes, that is important. But today we're talking about the lost lives of police officers. So yes, they all matter. But when we're saying black lives matter, we're talking about black lives matter. We're not talking about every other life because those lives are not in jeopardy right now. And those lives are not the ones we're talking about. It doesn't mean that they don't matter, but this is the subject on the table right now. You know, and so when people return, respond back, black lives matter, all lives matter. Uh -huh. It credits the situation. It discredits what we're passionate about. It discredits what's important today. Uh, that's so that seek first to understand, take this scenario, you know, and think about all the other ways that weren't about race, you know, where you were passionate about something and someone else discredited it by telling you, well, yes, that matters, but all this matters. If we would just focus on all lives matter, you know, then we wouldn't be in this situation. No, that's not true. You know, I'm a, I'm a member of NAREP and I'm a member of ARIA. I'm neither Hispanic or Asian. Uh -huh. I go there, I put my ARIA pin on uh -huh. and I'm here gun ho to do whatever it is that I can do to support their mission of not being considered other, you know, to con and support their mission on bringing awareness to Asian home ownership and the discrimination that goes along with that. And that's what I'm here for. So it would not be accurate or appropriate for me to go to their event and be like, black home ownership matters. Well, of course black home ownership matters, but today we're talking about Asian home ownership. Yeah. And that's kind of the best example that I could give you. Seek first to understand is sometimes you have to take people outside of this part, the race situation. Mm -hmm show them the exact same scenario, mm -hmm. you know, in a different light. And hopefully that makes them understand that when you say all lives matter, it's not because you care about all lives, it's because you're trying to water down the fact that Black Lives Matter. Sure. That there's uh, a problem. Well, that, that was so uh, well spoken. Uh, by the way, you should get into politics and that's a compliment, okay? <laughs> um, you know, most politicians, you know, we all have our beliefs on them, but man, so well spoken and so, you know, I always tell my kids the same thing, you know, tone, how you say something is just as important as what you say, right? So from a seek to, seek to understand, there's empathy there. There's, hey, I haven't been in your shoes. I, I'd like to get your take on something, you know? And, and I feel like with social media, you know, I, I tell this all the time, well before the Michael Jordan uh, documentary that was out in April and May called The Last Dance, one of the things that was, 
uh, takeaways, uh, you know, he, he, they asked him why he never talked politics. And he said, because Republicans buy sneakers too. But I tell real estate agents in today's day and age, right, with an election year or two, you just got to be careful. So, of course, religion uh, is real and, and racial. You have to be really careful because we are in a position. So it's, it's kind of that what words of advice do you have? Because I, I tell real estate agents, you know, I'm, I, I say I'm Italian. I wear it on my sleeve. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is I, I'm, I'm, I try to be really neutral. Uh, when it comes to politics and stuff, but you don't want to not speak up on something if you if, if you believe in it, because silence isn't good either. But right. seek to understand, and and the, your tonality and how you respond is 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 important. Am I, what would you say to to someone that asks about that? Because that's a difficult question. It's a, it's a, there's a lot of this is an easy button, but this is a hot hot button right now because there's a lot of tensions out there and the political environment and everything else. It, it is very tough right now, you know, but here's what I will say. There's a time for silence. There's a time to be neutral and there's a time to speak up. And there's only two sides of racism, you're either for it or you're against it. And you don't have to get into long discussions. You don't have to um, explain yourself. Whatever you feel passionate with, that's your passion. You know, but ultimately, I stand with the Black community. You know, I stand against racism. Whatever is most neutral to you, but you take a stance, it is not the time to be silent right now. You know, and my best friend's Italian, and I've had to have that conversation with her too. And luckily for us, she, you know, has... Um, biracial nieces and nephews and so she understands a little bit the fear of a mother you know because her sister talks to her about it and she understands some of those things but there is a time that you can still take a stance and not lose business or whatever that might be because I'm a person who does not talk politics typically I've been very this is the most verbal I've been in my whole career and I did it knowing that there could be some backlash from it but I'll tell you something, Michael, the response that I have gotten has been huge. You know, I had someone who, it was a client of mine, never met him before because we did a long distance transaction. He's a firefighter um, over in Ohio and he called me out of the blue, you know, and said, hey, I read your post and I have sat around and watched things happen and not spoken up. You know, and I have seen these things happen to my fellow firefighters who were black, you know, or Hispanic, and I never stood up for it. And thank you so much for saying that, because now I won't let that happen again. You know, and so it might be something where you're not shouting to the world. Sure, sure. Make a conscious decision every day to really look for these things and make a difference. Uh -huh. Shout it out. But I know that moving forward, he will be open. He will have his eyes open to these situations. And I'm confident that when it comes up again, he will not be silent. Mm. And that is all. Don't be silent. When it really matters, you need to decide whether or not you are for the good and you are on the right side of a situation or you are on the wrong side of a situation. And let me just be very clear. Black Lives Matter does not mean that police officers don't matter at all. Because one thing that I can tell you is if officers stop being silent, they could weed out the bad so that their image would always stay good because I'm certain the majority of them are. But just as we are on bad transactions with agents that we know it's unethical and we don't say anything, then agents get a bad rap, right? right. Not all of us, we're all, the majority of us are great agents. Right. But we were tasked to step up and do something and we just let it go because we might have another transaction or they're a top producer so it might mess with our money later on right. we were tasked to step up and we did it so we're part of the problem mm -hmm. and i think that's the same situation in, in everything we're all tasked to be here for a higher power and for a better reason and when you are called you'll know that moment same way i never talk politics but that day i knew i needed to say something sure and there will be things that come from it. So I would just say silence. There's time to be silent. There's a time to speak up. No, I, I, and I think personally, 
the time has never been more important than right now. Great, great advice, great we're advice. In another civil rights movement, whatever that ends up looking like, mm -hmm. the time is now. That's, that's great advice. Yeah, I, I remember speaking up recently where a, a friend of mine, African-American, I played football with, posted something and he meant well by it. And maybe you've seen these posts where, you know, it says, you know, most cops aren't bad, most whites aren't racist, most blacks aren't criminals. And, and, and I, I'm like, the vast majority of blacks aren't cr criminals, you know, and like, I, even just by throwing most, you're saying majority, like, so I just didn't like seeing them, that, you know, so. I, I'm, I, you know, trying to speak up. You know, my kids are great examples of this. I'll never forget my my oldest. He's 11, but when he was like in fourth, uh, four years old, when he was in kindergarten, his his teacher it was awesome. She she was one of the nicest teachers in the world. Had a heart of gold, smile from ear to ear. She was African American, and we didn't know what the, what teacher he was talking about because he had a couple speech teachers and teachers throughout the day, and he he couldn't describe. He was trying to describe, but he, he couldn't describe because he didn't see color. It was it was it was so innocent, and it was great to see. And so, um, I think we can learn from each other. I, I try to post positive, uplifting. Not that I'm naive that there isn't other things, but I, I want to I, I want to post things that unify. Versus, there's a lot of things out there that are posted that I think should be. Don't get me wrong, um, but I think there's a lot of good in both sides. And um, I just want to make sure that we continue to raise the bar. So conversations like these, um, you know, are, are, are important and need to happen. Absolutely. And I'm always open to have the conversation. No, I can you tell that. You have to, you know, I think you, you have to be open to the conversation. I'm reading um, a book, White Fragility, you know, and it's, it's, it's very interesting. And it's, it goes over why is this so difficult? you know, for, for white people to have this conversation. Why does it make them so uncomfortable? Well, it's hard for me because I can't, I can't begin to have a conversation unless I can put myself in their position. So I'm like, well, let me go read. Let me go figure it out because ultimately these are people that I know, but they don't understand and I don't understand why they don't understand. And so we've got to be able to bridge that gap if we're going to be the ones to make the change. Uh -huh to support progress, we have to learn. And so I'm committed to learning and I'm committed to having as many conversations as I need to have um, to learn, you know, as well as teach. That's great, that's great. Well, very good information today. I want to kind of bring it back to NAREB because mm -hmm. then we'll, we'll um, look for any questions. But so folks, check out NAREB.com, NAREB.com. You'll find a lot of information, including uh, where maybe your local chapters, if there is a local chapter, um, there's, there's annual conferences, but of course those are put on hold just like most conferences. Mm -hmm. But you typically have the mid-year, uh, right after the new year, right? You guys had, you did have this year's mid-year. Right? Did you have that this year or because of? Yes, we had midwinter here in Las Vegas. We had our highest attendance, over 500 attendees for a mid, for a midwinter. So it was great. And even though everything's kind of stopped now, we'll probably come out with something really strong and virtual to sure. make sure we're giving back to our members and giving them what they need. That's awesome. Uh, so let me look for questions and then if there are none, then we'll um, get this up on the various sites. We'll get in our YouTube channel. Uh, so Mark Benson's watching from Naples, uh, Naples Florida. Uh, Rob Pasker says that's right. Shante, so Rob, thanks for the, the watching and, and the comments. So, do you have anything else that you'd like to share um, or say while the floor is yours, so to speak? Um, I would just say, you know, see first to understand. Get out there as real estate agents. We are going to be called for a, a, a serious task. You know, there will be families hurting. There will be people who need short sales. Who knows what the situation is? Educate yourself now so that you are ready when your time is called to represent our community and take care of our clients. Um, give out to your community. It's always a perfect time, but it's more important than anything. Check up on your people. Check on your clients. Make sure that they are okay. And continue to educate yourself join and be a NARAP member. There is no greater time than now. We are by far ahead of the majority of associations when it comes to education 
and networking and bringing you what you need to stay successful in your business. Go on our website, NAREB.com, look at what we do. You can see our policy positions on there, as well as the NAREB 8, get a history. We have a great 13 minute video on the history of NAREB from some of the original presidents, and they can truly tell you about the process and the struggle that they went through to get us here now. And there's people like me in this generation that just wanna be able to move forward, keep the foundation of what they gave us and then move it forward into the next generation. Well, so you're, 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 yeah, you're, you're absolutely welcome. Tons of fun. Hopefully we'll do it again. And I'm looking forward to bringing luxury to NARET. Well, you're absolutely welcome. Thank you. You're so well-spoken. And uh, like I said, you, you, there's definitely a higher calling for you to, to impact <laughs> lives. So like literally um, on my desk, I know you probably can't read it, but there's yes, a, your there's name, a, birthday, date, past, number of lives affected. Yeah, I so I, I I I believe you know if if we're all challenged and on our gravestone it said number of lives affected, you know that's the platform I'm at. I believe I can impact thousands of lives through our podcast, through our trainings, um, more so than just selling a couple hundred homes a year. So that's why I do both. I do sell real estate, and I'm very passionate about it. But uh, I, I can tell that you're very passionate about your message and your yeah. cause which is an amazing cause mm -hmm. and i do believe you have a great platform at nareb and and i think uh, you got some thank some you. great opportunities in your, your your future so keep it up thank you thank you so much michael and um for those of you that are on this uh, zoom training um i please send me an email uh, I, I typed it in the chat feature and I'll make sure I get you uh, five that are on here, actually six that are on here, uh, Val, Stacy, Lisa, uh, Dorinda, uh, De DeAndre, and then Carlton. I'll make sure I'll get you guys a pass for this week's uh, luxury yes. designation training and I'll get that, uh, Shante, I'll get that over to you Perfect. along with the Shout other. Out. Region 15, you guys showed up, I appreciate you. Yeah, you guys, thank you for giving her some support. She was awesome, wasn't she? So thank you. Thank you. All right. Hey, have a great Monday, everybody. Keep raising the bar. I tell people all the time, prove others wrong. When someone says you can't do something, you know, let you light a fire under you to, to prove others wrong and, and go make somebody's day. Thank you so much, Shante. Thank you, Michael. Have a great Monday. All right, you too. Thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.